Hola, bienvenido to the Green Cards to Greenbacks podcast, hosted by me, Nestor Vargas. I'm here to teach you everything you need to know about using your dinero to create wealth and find money independence. As a kid from Colombia who grew up in a barrio, I got fed up with having money insecurities, so I decided to become a personal finance expert and a certified financial planner. After 12 years of mastering my money skills, I'm ready to share with you how I help million dollar clients grow their wealth. If you're looking to become a master at managing your dinero, you're in the right place. Now, let's dive into the episode. All righty, welcome back, my friends. Welcome back to an episode of the Green Cards, the Greenbacks podcast. Today, I have a really special guest here. Her name is Rebecca, uh, Coach Rebecca, I would say. And I want to go ahead and introduce her. Coach Rebecca is really passionate of pursuing the truth. She's committed of activating courage and awe-inspired experiences of beauty wherever she could witness them in the world. She's a mom of four happy, successful, growth-minded humans, a wife of 20-plus years to her best friend, and a coach to a tribe of strong-minded, goal-focused, intelligent clients. So welcome, Rebecca. How are you? Great, Esther. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate you wanting me to be able to be a voice of health and uh, stress management and healthy eating to your listeners. No, absolutely. I'm so excited to have you. For those who are listening, Rebecca and I are part of this mastermind group, so I get to speak with her on a weekly basis, and it's a special treat for sure. So I'm really excited to have her here. Today, what we're going to talk about really is how, you know, how money impacts stress and really what we can do about it. Well, we can do about it. So let's go ahead and start there, Rebecca. What, what do you feel? How do you feel money you know, impacts stress? Yeah, gosh, there's a whole host of ways that we could spin this. You know, the first thing that comes to my mind, you know, whenever I think about finances, I think about that age old knowledge truth that if you put a little bit of away every single day, right? That's what financial advisors like you tell us to do, right? You say, to set aside a little bit from your paycheck every week. And what happens is it compounds and it grows. And then by the time you're retirement age, of course, if we all start when we're 20, we're like sitting really in a good position. But whenever we start, it doesn't really matter because no matter what, it's still going to compound. So to me, I think the first thing I want to point out is the relationship between financial wealth and physical wealth in terms of that compounding effect. So when we can start investing in our health today, it makes our tomorrow better. And if we can put aside a little bit of time, a little bit of effort goes a long way. We sometimes think we have to join these, these big like six week commitments and, and then that's gonna transform our life, but then we fall off because we lose interest. And, and so what ends up happening with health, it goes up and down, like we're on or we're off. And that might even be the case with finances. You know, people are really into saving or, you know, they have the crunch and then they stop saving. So yeah. starting to see health in terms of financial health or physical health is really being about setting aside a little bit every day. If you can make little changes to your health, it's going to compound over time. So now how this affects our finances specifically. So let's say that you're doing a great job of a little bit every day. You're you're making some investment in your health. You're, you're moving more, you're eating higher quality foods, you're managing your stress. And then how is that gonna impact, impact your finances? So I think of a lot of things. Number one, when we manage our health, specifically around movement, breath control, eating quality food, when we do those things, it helps us be able to think more clearly we're able to have a more positive mood. And so we interact with people in a more positive way. And also it makes it so that we can make better decisions and, you know, slows everything down. When we're anxious and we're stressed, we tend to make impulsive decisions that aren't always the decisions that are going to be good for us in the long haul. So I think that the benefits and the relationship between health and finances is related to stress management, making good decisions, and then that confidence that comes out in your your physicality. When you feel good about yourself, you tend to stand taller, you tend to approach people in a more positive way. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to be 
in the circle with somebody who's confident and kind and and is listening and all of those are benefits from exercise because it calms our nervous system down so we can actually engage with other people and have those important relationships which is really what finances is all about right connecting to people oh man that's that's great i think the question that i should have asked is how does physical health help us with our finances and and i think you just really nailed it i think personally when I feel stressed out and I don't go work out and relieve that stress, I, you know, I start shopping, right? Or maybe I start looking for things that I want to buy. Definitely start stress eating. Man, those Oreo cookies are gone. That's my weakness uh, too. Yeah, I kind of can't keep those in the house. No way. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. So, you know, going back to the different ways we can manage stress, walk us through maybe some of the top strategies that you use with your clients to manage stress? Yeah, so when I think of stress management, I do, number one, I always think about movement because stress is really like this stuck place. It's a, It tends to be anxious thoughts that just repeat like, oh no, we're predicting some doom for our future, right? That's an anxious thought. Or we're in kind of a negative spin about our past, bad decisions we've made and ruminating over that, right? So all that creates stress and it's this place of stuckness. So there's a real strong connection between our physicality, our mental capacity, health, all of it, right? So once we start moving, we actually start literally moving through the cycle of that negative thinking, right? So it gets us unstuck. We kind of focus on something else. We find success, you know, here we're thinking, Oh, I can never exercise. We we have this sort of a negative association, maybe because of a high school PE teacher who said, you know, it's all, you know, it's all hard and it's no fun, whatever the association is. But once we get out there, we say, hey, you know what? Taking a 20 minute walk isn't that hard, especially it's on my lunch period. I tend to eat a little too fast anyway. So if I've got a half hour lunch period, I eat my five to 10 minute lunch and I go out for a 20 minute walk, there's your 30 minutes. And guess what? When I come back, now I can think more clearly. I've let go of any negative stuff that's already happened in my morning. And so, so number one stress management tool is just moving your body. It helps us move on for the negative stuff. And it physically starts this cascade of stress reducing hormones, gets rid of the negative stuff, ups the good stuff. So number one, I'd say move. Number two is find some grounding reading habits. So you can find a whole bunch of these on YouTube, just YouTube stress management reading, and you're gonna find options to connect with. Find one that speaks to you. You know, you like the person doing the stress or the uh, breathing habit and follow along and find one that actually works. It usually only takes about five minutes of conscious breathing to make a difference. And so those two are probably the biggest ones. If you're really going for that next level, thinking about your food, it does make a difference because the quality of food that we eat does affect our thinking and it does affect our stress. So Mm. if you're on a cycle of high, high sugar, low quality foods that kind of jack up your energy and then you're crashing. And then you, you, now you're low. And so you, you're craving something again, and then you're jacked up and then you crash. And so you're on this up and down swing throughout the day. And that's going to create a lot of stress because as humans, we like stability. We like a certain level of predictability. And when we can't even create stability and predictability in our own moods or in our own energy level, it puts everything else a little bit into a question mark. So I would say move, learn how to breathe and start to eat higher quality foods that will help stabilize your moods. I love that. Those are those are three amazing recommendations that you've given us. I, I would say also finding an accountability partner, right? It could be mm. it could be a friend, but also a coach. I think a coach can really take you to the next level and making and, and making the thing that you want to accomplish easier, helping you track your progress, and just giving you that expertise as well. But that's that's really great. Now we talked about how to manage your stress, but you know. This show is also about money, right? And and ultimately, we are saving to enjoy our money. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hope we're not just saving to see those dollars Mm. in our accounts grow, because that's never (laughs) gonna, you know, you're never gonna find (laughs) happiness there. Right, right. So, so physically as well, as we continue to age, 
what are the things that we should be doing to keep our body healthy? What exercises maybe should we stay away from? What should we incorporate as, mm. as we age? Yeah, great question. So, so much though, the exercise world is such a big place that I can see why people avoid the whole thing because it can be completely intimidating. You know, we, we all tend to carry images in our minds of what it means to be fit, what it means to be somebody who exercises, what is all that about? So, you know, you can go from heavy, heavy bodybuilder types to, um, to yoga. There's, there's, in a sense, there's something for everybody. So if you like engaging in groups, if you like group classes, go to a group class, right? So uh, I guess I'll back up. I've, I've kind of jumped a little bit forward, but in terms of your question, like, what can we do? Well, number one is find a form of exercise that makes you happy. I would say number one, that's the thing because we do what we enjoy, right? And, and the fact is that we won't do what we think we're gonna fail at, right? So if we think we're gonna fail at anything in life, not just exercise, anywhere, if we think we're gonna fail, we will do almost anything to avoid that activity, right? So I'd say the first thing you actually wanna do is give yourself permission to choose a kind of exercise that works for you. And so that means not only the kind of exercise, that means the space that you exercise, that means the people you exercise with. So for example, some people really like the gym environment and they love the sociability, whether they know anybody or not, they just like being part of a group. They like having that nice dressing room where they can shower afterwards and they like having a selection of classes, whether they use them or not, they just like it, right? So if you're into that, do that by all means. And then once you're there, choose the avenue that works for you. Do you. Are you at the treadmill, earbud kind of person? You just stay in your own space. Do you expand beyond into the weight room? That's great. Do you get a personal trainer so that you can have that one-on-one -on -one accountability like you're talking about? Do you do the group classes, like the spinning thing where it's like you're just stationary, but you just have to move? Or do you like more dance style? So there's a whole host of things that you can do. You know, there's CrossFit, there's yoga, there's Orange Theory. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, there really is an opportunity for everybody to get in there. That being said, actually, it's interesting because probably the one thing out there is that there isn't actually a huge amount of help for people who really don't like the gym. So unless, you, you know, unless you're comfortable going for a walk and you're a solo person, that's a good option. Um, and actually, a lot of people I help is I help a lot of people who don't like going to the gym because it's intimidating. It's just... It's just distracting or something. So the people who tend to work with me do like this smaller, more intimate environment where there's not tons of windows, there's no mirrors. We're not focused on that. We're just focused on the experience of exercise, right? So number one, I'd say find something that works for you and just do it, right? Don't overthink it, just do it. Give it a good six, eight weeks of trial to see like, hey, you know what? I feel better, I like it more positive and negatives, I'm going to keep doing it. And then try to commit to that and just really keep building consistency around that. And then as far as the aging component, so number one, find something you like. Number two, if you can start to incorporate some kind of weight-bearing exercises, it's just good for the aging process because it helps build the bone density. It helps just create strength. So when we have strength, things happen such as not only the bone density, but if you do fall, you're less likely to hurt yourself. You've got more padding. You know, we tend to think of like fat as being padding, but not so much really. Muscle is what's going to hold your tendons and your bones in place and protect you. And um, like I had, I was trying to get something out of my kids, um, a playground equipment, uh, a Frisbee had got thrown up there and I'm a pretty good climber. So I climbed up there, but what I didn't anticipate is at the top when I was holding on, this was like 10 feet in the air, when I got up there, it's a hand that I had to grip like this. And I'm used to gripping like bars, which are like this. So this grip strength was not there. And so I fell backwards about 10 feet onto the vault and just bam. And I dislocated a few fingers and that wasn't such a good thing. But the thing is, I didn't hurt myself at all. And I think it's because I had so much muscle, honestly, and not only muscle, but I was mobile. You know, I do a lot of mobility exercises to keep limber and keep my spine supple. So building that muscle is important. You know, I think it's easy to be like, oh, I just go for my walks, that's fine. But if you're really looking for optimal aging, I would make sure that you include some kind of weightlifting for the bones density, for the muscle. And then what ends up happening when you build 
muscle and strength and all that's required with those exercises, you also build the brain's ability to create balance and agility. And that kind of stuff is going to make it so that when you stumble or trip, you actually can catch yourself, right? Whereas when you're just walking, you're using the exact same muscles over and over and over again, and you stumble and trip and you fall and you don't have the protection. And that's when the injuries start happening. And that's the decline that you see people go through when they're later in life. So if you're looking for a strategy to age with grace and with a vibrancy that we all want so we can play with our grandkids, being able to get down on the ground or go out with them and run around or swing them and the, whatever way you see being a grandparent should be like, just being engaged mentally, all of it, I would say make sure you just Put in that little bit every day, take the effort and include strength training at least two to three times a week so that you can protect yourself from injury in the future. So I would say that those are probably the most important things. And, um, and then of course, uh, quality eating and actually relationships. I will, I'll throw that in there too, in terms of main, making sure that you have the kind of retirement that Nestor is setting you up for, that you're setting people up for, you know, they've got all this wealth, they built this nest egg, they, they don't have to worry so much about the day-to-day -day operations of their finances, but make sure that you put uh, something aside every day for your relationships, because there are studies that show that if there's anything that's going to create a long life and a healthy life, it's actually the relationships that you have. The biggest things that suffers is their relationships. And, and that's, to me, probably the bigger deal when it comes to our declining health is that we lose these connections. So I'd like to help people build that health so they feel good about themselves. And when we feel good about ourselves, we feel good about the relationships we're in. And then as a result, we end up having this. I, I want to talk about the power of having an expert by your side. Right? Like uh, I was down in Orlando with a few guys that I'm part of this mastermind as well. And we went wakeboarding, okay? And I hadn't been wakeboarding for maybe five or six years. In fact, the last time that I tried to go wakeboarding, I could not get up on the board. I just could not, could not. We were lucky enough to actually have a coach who is a pro, a pro wakeboarder. And she had me up on that wakeboard on the first try, the first oh. time she hit the, the boat. And then she had me doing tricks about 20, 30 minutes afterwards, right? Like, <laughs> it, it, I want to meet her. She sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> she's super, she's, she's super cool. Um, but it, it makes me think like, okay, like if, if you want to go at it on your own, sure you can. Just be careful and you have to know yourself. But two, there's just so much amazing stuff that can happen by having an expert that knows mm -hmm. how to teach, right? Mm -hmm. That knows how to teach. And, and so for our listeners, let's say they, they want to now engage in working with someone that does what you do. What are the things that they should look for when choosing a, a, a fitness professional? Mm, yeah, great question. You know, back before I was a coach, I would go to gyms and hire people to be my personal trainer or you know, lean into somebody who seemed knowledgeable. And so it's along the way, I learned quite a bit about what what range of care there is out there <laughs> Let's put it that yes. way. and uh i'll tell you it's not uh once but at least two or three times i've been hurt under the care of somebody who uh who put too much on me you know and i i think i've always kind of had a physique that makes me look strong and you know i am strong but i think sometimes people overestimate my strength uh just because i look strong, you know, that Whoa. kind of thing. <laughs> but, but like for, I was like 22, just out of college, went into a gym. This guy was loading on all this stuff on my leg press and, and I got hurt. Right. So did I go back to the gym? No. Right. And then later I was with a personal trainer after I think my second child and she's having me do all these, uh, these sprints and I'm exhausted. I haven't worked out in like six to nine months. And she's putting all this on me. And then she's having me bench press uh, with this dumbbell. And then it fell down on me and kind of hurt me. And did I use her again? No. Even though I still had probably three or four or paid sessions that I had to use, right? So, but <laughs> once you don't trust somebody, everything goes out the window, 
right? So for me, for example, working with people, the number one priority is their safety. Their safety is most important. And so as a result, what my priority is, is around listening. I listen, I ask a lot of questions. How does this feel? What's this like for you? And that way I know, because I can't, I can't read somebody's mind. I don't know their body the way they do, right? So if you're choosing to work with somebody, you want to work with somebody who, number one, you can trust, right? You feel good about. Don't just go from their credentials because there's a lot of people out there who are really knowledgeable and they love working out, but they're not great coaches, right? No, that's that's amazing. I love the fact that it that maybe we need to find someone that it has a, a good discovery process that listens to us, that is asking a lot of questions before it starts prescribing something, uh, which is really great. And I love what you said about speaking up for yourself. I think I even practice up with doctors these days before I was just going to the doctor mm -hmm. and be like, hey, you got to take this. I'm like, okay. Now I'm like, okay, sure. well, why are you prescribing this? Like you, you, you want to ask the questions as well. Well, you know, coach Rebecca, like, I want to work with you. How, how do yeah. I, how do people actually find you? What, what do you offer? How do, how do people uh, connect with you? Yeah. You know, if you're interested in exploring what it would be like to work with me, I have really two paths I work with people on. I do the personal training route. And if you happen to be in Suwannee, Georgia, awesome. <laughs> you can come to my garage. <laughs> but if you're not in Suwannee, Georgia, don't worry. You know, all's not lost. I do a lot of Zoom sessions thanks to COVID. That was to me one of the better parts of COVID is we all discovered that, oh, we could actually do quite a bit remotely. And my time with personal training clients depends on if they're coming once, twice, or three times a week. But the time is divided somewhere between us talking so I can help them decide on habits that they're working on, like how to help them progress because everybody has a goal, right? So we establish a goal. We figure out where's our path going. And then from there, we're figuring out, okay, what are we going to work on when we're together? You know, maybe that's uh, some kind of life coaching stuff around relationships or uh, sort of some stressors that we don't know how to handle at work, whatever it is. There's maybe a component of that, maybe not. Uh, sometimes we're, we're talking about food, right? Like uh, oftentimes yeah, totally. weight loss goals or, uh, or maybe mm -hmm. physique goals that are more building. And so we're, there's a nutrition component, right? So we do need to spend a little time talking about, okay, well, what are your habits? What do we need to change? What are you willing to change, right? And that's a, a little side note I want to say that in all my coaching, I want people to know that we're all adults here. Right. And part of being an adult means that we all get to make choices. I'm in a coaching position. I see myself more as a guy. I'm not standing over you telling you what to do, partly because it doesn't work. <laughs> I could tell you what to do, but I don't think you're going to do it because as humans, we all kind of want to feel in control. So part of the dynamic is me helping empower you to make decisions that are actually going to work for you. Right. Yeah. So there's a talk component, but otherwise our time together is spent working on mobility, working through injuries, working through pain. And then there's a strength component, just like, okay, let's, let's build some leg strength. Let's build the arm strength, core strength, right? There's that strength focus. And then we put it together in a, in a workout that's somewhere from seven to 15 minutes long, typically. I might give uh, a list. Usually I'll give a list of like maybe $150 worth of equipment that they could buy, something simple, but that will get us going. That's how I spend time with people. And then uh, that's the personal training component. Now there's another component, another path. If personal training is more of a commitment than you want, or it just doesn't work for you in any way, and you kind of like the group thing. Like I know people who just, they just love being part of a community and they just want to be held accountable. That's it. Is that you? Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, me. <laughs> yeah. So in that case, uh, I have this great new program. I'm so excited about it. It's called Consistency for Results. And it's all around helping people build consistency around the three most important self-care behaviors, which are movement, and I call it empowered eating, and uh, stress management. So you're gonna be doing the, the breathing techniques, you're gonna be working on that. And so everybody has a path, and right now we're, we're just about nearing the beginning of, our, of, our, of this quarter, and we start on Sunday. So if anybody's okay. interested, I would love to have you in the program because it's going to be great. There's community, there's support. I'm holding you accountable. There's a place to yes. put in, you log your consistency and you're going to be able to put nice. in there. Yeah, I did my run today. I, I you know, food prep. You can put 
all of that in there. Wow. And then I'm there your, the whole way. It's, I'm an actual human. I'm not just uh, putting this <laughs> program out there and bye-bye, good luck. Hope it goes well for you. Yes. I'm actually there day in and day out, coaching you, giving you suggestions, yes. answering your questions, supporting you. But it's really the most, it's the most practical format for a group in this online format to help the yeah. most people be able to walk on this journey that allows them to, in a year's time, to achieve a goal that's really important to them and to build the consistency around that so they can feel good about themselves. Rebecca, I, I love that. I love the holistic approach that you're taking to health. You know, a lot of people think about financial advisors as just investments. But there's so much more to helping people with their financial life, like goal setting um, mm -hmm. and making sure we're looking at their state plans and making sure we're looking at their taxes. And so it's kind of mm -hmm. very similar to what you're doing. You really are taking that holistic approach, which really is truly the best approach. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's amazing. I'm so glad that we were able to chat with you today. Yeah. Rebecca. It's is there great. anything that you want to kind of uh, say before we, we close, close up? You know, I, I actually just want to say something about with what you just said, Nestor, and that's my sense of who you are. You know, in, in all of our interactions, I see how positive you are and you're giving, like in our in our focus group, for example, you're you're the one asking questions, you're the one who's wanting to understand what each of us is going through. You're the one saying, Hey, did I just hear you commit to that? <laughs> did I just hear that this is your action stuff for the week, right? So there's like that level of accountability coming from you. So I think anybody who works with you is really lucky. And even in the conversations we had, I can see how caring you are. And it's so important because really what you're doing is really similar to what I'm doing in the sense that I'm trying to help create people's identity that is wrapped up with their health, right? Like I want their health to match their values. And what ends up happening a lot of times is people are trying to fit somebody else's values of health. Whereas really what I'm helping them do is see, well, what are your values? Well, what's important to me is my family. Oh, okay, well then let's work on that, right? Like for me personally, in my health, I wake up because I wanna be a good mom, right? I wake up to exercise so I can be a good wife and I can be a good coach. I'm not really all that interested in my physique, but really for me, it's about the value of my family and my uh, and my responsibilities and my respect as a coach. And so yes. when I see you, what you're doing is I see you building these financial goals for people and helping them think through what are your values? Why do you even, why do you care about money? Why are you even trying to save money? What's, what's yep. it matter to you? And they're like, well, because my family matters to me or because I want to leave a legacy for multiple generations or because, you know, my, my parents didn't have this. And it's really important for me to set this example for my kids so that they know how to manage their wealth, because that's not something I learned as a kid. And so yes. they have all these reasons why building financial wealth is important to them and you're helping them do that. So I think it's great what you're doing. I think you're an inspiration to a lot of people who need a voice for that the finances matter, right? And yes. that that it does matter and it does tie into their values and they don't have to become a multimillionaire. They don't have to become a, a mogul. They don't have to become a shark. Like they can actually be themselves. They can be kind. They can be a family person. They can just want something simple for their family to make it so that everyone lives just a little bit more comfortably. So thank Amen, you for Rebecca. I love it. Thank you for being here. Thanks and for having me. for everyone listening here, we're going to go ahead and put all the links on how you can actually reach Rebecca on the show notes. So make sure you head over to www.greencards to greenbacks.com and we'll have everything ready for you. Rebecca, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Nestor. Bueno, pues. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I want to go ahead and ask you to please send me any questions you may have or any topics you want me to talk about. I'll go ahead and send them to Nestor, N-E-S-T-O-R, at greencards to greenbacks.com. I actually read every email you send, so I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to head over to greencards2greenbacks.com for the show notes for this episode and really links to any resources we may have discussed. Bueno, amigos y amigas, nos vemos pronto. Let's go make those greenbacks.